But today's guest is an actor and a former Strictly contestant who's joining us for a very special reason, as well as telling us why he was out partying with the cast of The Crown last night. We'll see how joyful and fresh he's feeling this morning. Please welcome the wonderful Greg Wise. <laughs> In my, with my news hat on, we were live from the red carpet at the Crown last night. Such a great turnout. Did you have fun at the after party? It was. I, I actually left the after party because I knew I had to be fresh and lovely for you <laughs> today. Um, but so that was, was about three a.m. No, 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 no. I was, I was, I was home by midnight. But it was mad. It was mad. Three thousand people there. We were all, they, yeah. all, all dressed Black. up in our monkey suits, <laughs> um, and a fantastic crowd all waiting for autographs beforehand. You know, it's an enormous yeah. show. You forget yeah. what a big show it is. Absolutely. Uh, um, and then we all got to see the very last episode. No spoilers. No, no. Well, tell us what I can't happened. tell you. I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, please. No, no, no. no we're... How could you watch the last episode before you've watched the ones before? Because they, they haven't dropped them yet, have they? They haven't dropped them, but um, I was alive in 2003 <laughs> when the last episode is set. Oh, OK. So, uh, I know what happened. OK, yeah, so we exactly. don't have to yeah, see yeah. the ones So before. the asteroid didn't hit <laughs> before. Uh, uh, no spoilers. And the Queen's still alive. Really? Yeah, yeah. OK. Because yeah. she only died. So you already know the ending, so it's but, um, absolutely fine. But it was beautiful, and Imelda is just fantastic. She is, isn't she? I have she's to say amazing. that, because she's our next-door neighbour. I wish she is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These show the circles nice that you roll So with. when she comes out and sweeps the street, we bow <laughs> gently to her. <laughs> she does. She was sweeping the street. But you we, don't see people doing that we anymore. Don't have we don't We used to do it, and I do it now outside my and door. And everyone's the sliding around all over the place. So Mrs Queen <laughs> was yeah. out there. I'm going to get Dame Mrs Wise to do it in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're here because you know it's been it's been an interesting few years for you, hasn't it? Yeah. And you spent time looking after your sister before she passed. And I know Jane, you've spoken to Greg about this before, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. And and what we're here to talk about is especially at this time of year, just how important it is for people to be very open about grief and not be afraid about having conversations about it. And we talk at about this quite a lot mm, in the programme, yeah. don't we? Because people underestimate just how powerful and supporting it can be to not just ignore somebody's grief, but encourage them to talk about it. I think one of the strange things that happened, or natural things that happened from COVID, was that everyone suddenly realised that we're all mortal. Yeah. And everyone was grieving, and everyone knew someone who was grieving. And what's happened since then, which has been great, people have been more open about their own grief and more available to listen to other people's grief. Yeah. Uh, and this week, as I'm sure you all know, is National Grief Awareness <laughs> Week. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Um, which seems sort of counterintuitive running just before Christmas, but we have to realise that Christmas is a really hard yeah. time yeah, it is. for an awful lot of people because uh, uh. we feel this immense social pressure to be happy and joyful and up and with it. And a lot of the time, you're not. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, Christmas is difficult because maybe someone close to you has died since the previous Christmas, and this yeah. is the first Christmas without yeah. a significant other in your life there. So we're all in a very strange place mm. anyway. It's a um, funny old thing, isn't it, grief? Because, I mean, we all grieve differently, but also you look at the way other people place expectations on you when you're grieving. So, you know, somebody might do it a different way to somebody else, and everybody's like, well... Wow, you're doing uh, it wrong. Oh, you're doing it wrong. Know, How dare I know, you? I know, I know, it's mad. It's mad, isn't it? And that there should be a prescribed amount of time mm. that you are allowed. What's, what's, what's very odd, and actually later today I'm going to now as a parliament to, to chat a bit about grief there, is Sort them out for us. I'll sort them out. <laughs> but there's no statutory leave for bereavement. No, there isn't. No. You know, you get six yeah. months, yeah. you get nine months when you have a child. Yeah. But if your spouse dies... Yeah, yeah. Oh, darn. You have to really play on it to try and get any time off. Or you hope something. that your employer... Yeah, would understand. ..has a big heart yeah. and allows you the time. But there's no... Of course, there's no time frame for grief. My mm. sister died seven years ago now. Um, in one of the previous commercial breaks, I was watching you downstairs, was a thing about a cancer charity. And here I am starting to... Yeah. ..to yeah. well and grieve oh, yeah. about my sister because... It will always sit with you. It sits in a different place. It yeah. maybe sits in a slightly different, deeper place, because mm -hmm. when you first lose someone close to you, grief is front and centre. Mm. Yeah. But, but, but it, it, 
it will always the wave, be with yeah. you. I, I refer to it as the wave. I, I lost a really dear friend of mine. It's coming up to her anniversary, actually, and there's these waves that just yeah. catch me. Yeah. And I just think, oh, and I need, to, I need to vent. I need to have somewhere to put that. But I think maybe as you get older, people assume they're going to lose grandparents and parents. But I think it's when you lose people like siblings yeah. or friends, yeah. people who were in your... Same age well. group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels yeah. that's something that I think has really been something we've been allowed to talk about more because it since it's since COVID. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you you sort of we know that you moved in with Claire and you mm. looked after her, which I thought was absolutely lovely. And I assume because you knew she was dying, you got to say all the things that you wanted to say to her. It must have been an incredibly sad but an incredibly special time well one of the i mean it's a huge learning process all of that but one of the things which is very clear is i was not the star of that show she <laughs> was and she was leading the conversation yeah and the conversations that she wanted to have and she didn't want to have conversations oh. right okay what was very interesting when our when our dad was dying she wanted the big conversation with him and he was right about it she was exactly oh, the same. Um, and, and did she give a reason for that? She or? was in denial. Yeah. 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 Uh, and interestingly, one of the Macmillan nurses, um, when she was going through her breast cancer, because she eventually died of bone cancer, but when she was in the breast cancer stage and she went to therapy at the Macmillan Centre, they said, I think you're doing so well because you're in such denial. Yeah. So denial wow. can be useful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, This isn't happening, it's all fine, oh. I'll just get on with it. And, and one thing that the charity that works alongside says that there's a question that you should ask someone if they are going through the grieving process. What do they suggest? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what they need to hear. I, I, I think one of the things about grief is there are no rules no. and we can't be prescriptive. Yeah. But you can prepare, because you talk about this death file, which I'd never heard of, which sounds like everybody needs to know about. Yeah, well, that's, that's slightly different. I've, I've, I've had to clear the houses of my dad and my mum and my sister and go through all their stuff and be their executor and sort everything out. And it's a nightmare yeah. if stuff hasn't been sorted out. So yeah. an act of love yeah. to those you love who will be having to look through all of your stuff after you die, please write everything down where the spare key is for that thing. <laughs> what the code what the is. What the password for, is yeah. for this. <laughs> yeah. Who's your pension provider? Yeah, wow. All of these things that we forget yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. Put it in a file, an electronic file or an yeah. actual file. Make sure you people You need to have. know what that is yourself, though, before yeah. you write it, because <laughs> I don't think I remember half my password no, be, or where the yeah. spare because key you're, is. Because you're, 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 my sister died. Probably the next day, I was on the phone to... to to someone, and they said, we have to talk to the account holder. And I said, I've just explained oh. the account holder. And they start screaming, data protection. Yeah, yeah. You no, go, no, no, it's are you thing. telling me no one has ever died under a phone contract? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, it's madness. So we yeah. all have to be a bit better at yeah. all of that. And, and, yeah, yeah we great idea. <laughs> Finally, uh, your sister enjoyed Christmas, so do you celebrate her every Christmas? Yeah, and she still gives our daughter a present every year. Yeah. Oh, 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 that's incredible. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Wise. Thank you. <laughs>